Hello and welcome to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone Edu Partner Program and Massage Industry Experts. With the challenges of COVID behind massage schools, students and practicing therapists, the EduTalk series continues to support virtual learning and building massage community by connecting you with industry experts who share their knowledge and expertise on topics, not only for class discussion, but career success. Tonight's expert is Sandy Fritz, a well-known practicing massage therapist with over 43 years in the massage industry. She's founder, owner, educator of Health Enrichment Center, a massage school in Lapeer, Michigan. And she's author of numerous industry articles, and textbooks, including Fundamentals of Therapeutic Massage and Massage Therapy Review. Additionally, Sandy's an owner of a massage therapy franchise, which gives her a unique perspective on sharing personal safety, the importance of gaining new skills, and career success, either as an independent practice owner or as an employee. Let's listen and learn as Sandy shares how professional boundaries using draping can be created and maintained and how educating clients about draping methods informs and enforces appropriate client behavior. She'll review draping policies and methods related to respect and modesty and how your attention to draping during any massage session maintains clear intentions between therapist and client. Plus, she'll show draping examples for boundary expectations using safe and clear procedures. Yay, hi Sandy, thank you for joining us. So and you think we're gonna do all that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we have a lot to cover, so I'll get there. <laughs> I'll let you get to it, and I'll see you on the other side. That sounds great. All righty. So, uh, Donella actually came up with this idea, and it has to do with some of the concerns about uh, client behavior and how we might reinforce the, the safety of the massage therapist. So um, she can, you can thank her for this little idea. Um, it is unfortunate that um, harassment of massage therapist occurs more than what people sometimes realize. And I think that it is a, a real important issue to be addressed. And a lot of that can be uh, prevented or you can be preemptive with a variety of policies um, that start before a person even enters the facility. So, uh, you might want to take a look at your policies, see how clear those are, and how you explain policies to people in the very beginning. We also have to acknowledge that there is a difference in how this, uh, these boundary issues work when you are self-employed solo practice, or if you're self-employed, but in some sort of a collective or group practice, or if you're an employee and an employer should be uh, protecting you as a massage therapist and enforcing a lot of these policies. So concreteness is unusual to find in some sort of an ethical thing like this. So I'm gonna show you some clips uh, from a demonstration in the classroom. Uh, I want to invite you to chuckle and, and laugh. Um, I usually don't do anything too rehearsed. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm actually teaching some draping procedures. It's not the whole clip, 
uh, it, I'll be moving from one piece to another that is most relevant to this idea of, of using draping as boundaries. Um, and I also want to invite you to take a look at the school uh, YouTube channel. It's Health Enrichment Center. If you put that into a search, it'll come up. There are just a lot of videos. And whether you're an educator or a uh, student or a practitioner, um, there's no obviously no charge for any of that. And you can pick up some uh, techniques or you can review concepts. And um, that's where I'm getting this video from. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and pull that up. All right, so uh, I need to know if, now can, do you see my screen? I just wanna make sure that it's up there and people can see it. Are we good with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so um, what you're looking at is a portion of the classroom here in Lapeer at Health Enrichment Center. And I've got my son, Luke, who is also, authoring textbooks with me now, um, halfway through getting the drape up on this demonstration. So um, I'll let it play and then I'll start and stop. And then we can look at questions um, or comments or suggestions that you might have. Uh, I am never one to say that my way is the only way, although I think my way is a good way. And I have been doing this for even longer than the 43 years. And so I've learned a lot by trial and error and from my own mistakes and the mistakes of others. So uh, pick up what you can use and discard what you think doesn't fit for you. So let's get this started. Um, Luke is in clothing um, and that is gonna make the draping a little less fluid. So I just wanted to point that out. All right, now make sure uh, that you let me know if you can hear the video as well, okay? All right. That, that is knock, knock, knock. Are you all set? Yep. All right. All right, let's just sort this out a little bit. Have the, are the bolsters comfortable where they are? Yeah. All right, very good. All right, now, I am not a fan of these things being pulled real tight. It, it's constraining. So I'm more apt when I come in to try to get a little bit of space within the drape. And if they are cold, this is where your additional blanket would come in. And, um, so this would be like a flannel sheet. And there's ways that you can Okay, so one of the things you'll probably notice when you watch this is that I have a lot of material on the table. And that in and of itself is a boundary. Um, I like to have a full sheet on the bottom of the table. Uh, and you'll see why in a minute, because I pull that flat sheet up and use it as part of the draping material. Um, I use a towel and uh, extra blanket. And so the client is encased in the draping. The other thing that I have always done is that clients always wear underwear. Uh, um, that in and of itself speaks to a boundary. So when I worked with so many professional athletes, they also wore um, the, the like uh, nylon athletic shorts that were easy to move around. So I suggest that one of your policies is, is that on the lower body that the client wears underwear. Now you can do what you want with that, but it immediately sets the stage um for a level of professionalism all right i'm going to move this forward here 
and so that you're not watching a whole bunch of stuff. All right. So <laughs> that's Luke right there. And what I'm getting ready to show is how you roll a bath towel uh, to act as a barrier around the breast area. So let's take a look at this. Okay. <laughs> put the stuff where it should be going for the client. If I've walked in, I even forgot this. I just have to confirm. Is your okay? So. The, you'll see how having this rolled towel here uh, shields the the breast when laying on the uh, on the stomach prone um, from view and keeps things kind of tucked in. It also creates a little bit of a lift, uh, and a lot of people find this very comfortable. The other thing I want to point out that's not directly related to our topic, but I think is important and often missed. This pillow here uh, is placed um, just above the pubic bone and below the navel. And uh, especially when a client is prone, what this does is keeps the lumbar area in a neutral position so that they don't stiffen up when they're laying on their stomach. Um, the, if you're laying flat without something there, your, your back is actually in hyperextension, which is not something that we want. So back to our topic, this rolled towel is something that I suggest you take a look at using. All right, so now I'm gonna start the video again. You're back comfortable laying in your stomach like that. So there. there. Good job. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Not that a male client would likely need it. All right. Do you see how that's covering the breast area there? And then you can see the position of the pillow. As much as a female, but it, I mean, again, Sometimes best practices this, is this, it uh, fills up a space, a contour where people will feel more comfortable if they've got something. So you've got this towel, you've got your pillow down here, you've got the bolster that's under the feet, we've got the full flat, and then we've got our cover here. All right, now, this is gonna look just like what we just practiced. Massage, massage. <laughs> What's this called? Oh, oh holding. <laughs> do you have to do it like this? <laughs> but you do want to be client focused and you want to be real deliberate um, with what you're doing. So I tend to start out with a little bit of rocking. Okay, so I'm going to do my massage and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to. So something I'll add that isn't right here. Um, I've heard people like Ben Benjamin and others uh, talk about it. And that is to make sure that the uh, arms, the client's arms are on the table and sometimes even tucked under their body. You're gonna see how some of the draping here will keep those arms contained. So that's another little thought. Bolster here. All right, see how I take the corner? See how I'm far away? So sliding the drape up this way on either side of it um, is it keeps the hands away from the groin area. So it's so I'm not fumbling up here. Now, which corner would I bring up? This um on the this one? Or no, yeah, no. I could have no, no. pulled. That's right. The if I needed one. more, this would come. So there's where I use that longer drape, um, the bottom sheet. You're going to see that a lot. 
And what that does is just keeps everything contained. That covers the arm, the arm can't fall off, the person can't reach out and touch me. Um, and it keeps them warm. And you're gonna see how it really isolates the area that you wanna work with. Come up. And there's that triangle right there. So that if I am bringing this sheet up further, you got coverage with it. You don't always have to bring this under, but you can if you want to secure it. Okay? This makes such a difference. It's just that corner up through there because you don't have to worry. Now you're not worried about all that. It's just there. Okay. Now, why would you want to move the top sheet first? To reinforce coverage. That's not going to work, is it? Oh, yeah. All right. Just some simple things like that. So there you go. Then we're going to have the client roll over. Okay, so I know there's controversy over, do they roll towards you? Do they roll away from you or whatever? Um, the, the important thing is to control the drape, um, which you do by securing one side of it at least uh, by leaning against the table with the drape between you and the table. Okay, let's move forward to the next clip here, which is... About there. This just gets put. I would... So that was the roll towel I had under the breast or around the breast area. And now it's just there and holds things down and again, acts as a boundary by having that additional weight there. And then you can use it a lot of different ways. It just it always did it like that. Just immediately put it there. <laughs> Makes life a lot easier. Now, the other thing I wanna point out that isn't directly connected to um, uh, our topic, but I think is uh, very valuable. I, I teach and use the sideline position a lot. It's not, it's not a, a, a position that I teach is used primarily for prenatal or whatever. It is a position that is used in a lot of ways that is uh, an advantage to the massage therapist for their body mechanics and, and their ergonomics. A lot of times it is the draping, uh, insecurity with the draping that uh, prevents massage therapists from putting clients on their side and the rolled bolsters make the person feel unstable. So this square bolster right here is, is a, I can't find them, so I cut them. It is a twin bed, six inch dense foam size topper. And we cut them, we just cut them with a knife to fit like this. Now this one is not in a, a case, um, but we put it in a king size, uh pillow cover and so that it slides a little bit easier but you can see the dimensions here and it makes a world of difference when somebody is laying on their side this goes under half leg up very good now do you see how this all tangled mm -hmm. that's all right just give it a plug there we go now when i get them on their side i tend to start at the legs it gives them a chance to wiggle and settle so I'm gonna uh, work on the top leg. So everything's kind of this triangle. See how I bring that up from the corner? Tuck down. Now, if I wanted additional coverage here, because this could gap, what am I gonna do with the bot? Yes. Uh, 
and then we're all set. And as I want to move up higher, you see I'm on the sides and I just grab this with my fingers. So again, you're seeing the use of that bottom drape come up and over. Um, the other thing very pragmatically with the sideline position is uh, yeah, that the genitals are um, disguised. They, they are down towards the table. Um, I don't work with a client in the side or the supine position for very long. And so it just uh, prevents that concern about if there's any kind of arousal or anything like that going on. And we're all set to go. For the bottom leg, and I'll have Luke roll over so you can see that. So redrape. Okay, I'm going to move this forward again here. We're going to work on the lower leg. We're going to bring that up. And then you got here's the leg. Again, to the side. And then this is real easy to work with. It's much easier to get to the medial thigh in this position. All right. We already showed you draping for the top leg. I'm going to bring this up preemptively. Bring this down. And I'm going to hold that right there. Can you bring your arm up and around? And right on top. This is going to go under their head. And now they're real secure in the front. This way. And I'll show okay, so tucking that sheet up under the head um, is one of the things that keeps the drape from slipping. Uh, and additionally, the you'll see that towel floating around in there that also acts as an extra barrier. I'll show you that. But now I can get to their back. And um, if I need to get to the side a little bit more then I can bring this, this drape over even more. But you can see that now there's a, a real solid sense of being secure and covered. So with this in the side, how do you support your body to actually do the side massage? It's really easy. Well, what about like... All right, I'm gonna move this forward just a little bit more. All right. Arm up and over, please. Let's see how I held that tight. This comes right under. And then you're all. Whoops. Let me move a little bit more there. Okay. Now you can see from the front view how that drape pulled tight across the chest and under the head um, is keeping it secure against the chest. That's nice and tight in through there. So if somebody has, um, if they don't like the tight component, you could loosen this a little bit more. Yeah, doesn't yeah. matter much. That's more just to keep it from, you yeah. know, getting too far over. So again, coverage is good. Wrinkles are in place. You, you, you know, you don't, you want to be careful that you're not spending hours and hours. All right. So, and then they roll on their back. Uh, guess what? Did you remember? <laughs> <laughs> you remove the bolster. 
Now, if you use <laughs> this system, you're not going to have much left to do. So I tend to tell them, okay, so let's bring your arm underneath again. And we're going to roll right onto your back. Okay. Not everybody needs to have a bolster under here. Um, you, they're not going to be on their back for very long. Make sure you don't have a tight drape. Um, and a, a trick is roll over on your back and then bend, keep your knees bent. That sets me up so I can get the bolster under there. Or it sets me up so I can work on the abdomen if I want to do that. The trick for that contour drape is the top drape. You get both corners. Hang on, Laura, I got your feet in there. There you are. Okay, you get both corners. It doesn't go this way, it's around and through, around and through. And while you're doing that, is it a good idea to pull it so it's for the front corner of the white sheet? You could if you wanted to. So it's the side, right? Yep. And then you can have the client do this, or you can do it. You reach across and you say, okay, just lift your back. So this allows for me to do joint movement in the area without. I have a question. Uh, if you are in your set, how can you do that on your fire? You may not be able to. So how do you? You'd put the towel across it. Okay. Yeah. You'd still bring this up and under yeah. uh, them. That way, and then the, the weight would still hold it. Okay. And, and then if they get cold. The there's your bottom sheet can come up. And then how did we do the, the chest drape? Towel over. Okay, get your arms up under the sheet. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put this right here, hold on to the towel. All right, and then your arms just off to the side. And then there we go. All right, so other little tricks you can, uh, if it's um, okay, there is at least one or two suggestions that you can use, uh, I hope. Um, the other thing in your intake forms um, that there is a, you can actually create a diagram uh and block out uh where you would have no touch zones usually that's across the breast area uh triangle uh from the top of the iliac crest uh down across to the uh upper thigh uh, to cover the anterior groin area and a similar triangle uh, for uh, coverage when you're looking at the gluteal hip area. And it's very graphic um, and it just, you know, you can make something that you either have the client look at or is hanging up um, that says no touch zones. So um, I am now open to feedback, questions, um comments um we're doing pretty good on time here and we'll just see where we want to go with this hi sandy it's donnell um i was thinking of the massages i get because i'm not a therapist and i missed what you said about there's a lot of sheets um and and not be distracted by that. I, I mean, I guess I'm used to the, them being flat on, you know, the sheets flat across me. And I, I've never had anyone use a towel. 
Um, are those common practices then? Those are the, the suggestions that I showed you. I've been in my textbooks for 25 years. Now, why would somebody not maybe use the towel? Or uh, I, you might have noticed that I had them in red so that they stuck out. I have a fitted sheet on the on top of the table. It acts as a sanitary barrier, but it also keeps the bottom drape from slipping around on that table. Um, and it's, you know, people go, I don't want to do all that extra laundry, you know? Well, yeah, and, and you know, the, sometimes the crispness of the draping uh, actually interferes with the ability for there to be enough screening of the body with the uh, materials that you're using. So I've taught it this way for years and years and years and years and years. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, there's still time for your comments or questions or to share with Sandy how you folks um, might do your draping. We'd love to hear from you and um, be a chat. And I'm just trying to think, I mean, there was a, a with the uh, Dushan Watson, the football player. Yes. I mean, your draping techniques would definitely help prevent situations like that. And I don't remember all the details he wanted of, a, of just, that. I just remember a towel. Yeah, he wanted a towel and he didn't want to have uh, any kind of underclothing on. And I just wouldn't have allowed that. Um, and I have worked with many celebrity uh, celebrity athletes and otherwise. And, um, you know, some of the thought was, well, I, I'm afraid that, you know, I mean, this person's got status or whatever, you know, I'm the one that has the status in the massage therapy room. Uh, there's just never any question about that. Now, I haven't always been close to 70 and had gray hair. <laughs> so for the massage therapists that are younger I have had to deal with um, a lot of uh, similar issues where I've had to say nope this is the way I do it well somebody at my other massage therapist says well I, it's this is the way I do it and I might also mention too that um, the draping that was shown for male massage therapists uh, really keeps things uh, covered and secure uh, so that they cannot be accused of inappropriate touch that may occur by accident. Now, accidents are gonna happen, but you know, I've had a sheet drop or whatever. Um, but with enough material there, you can get a quick recovery on all of that. So good yeah. point. Well, I don't see that any comments or questions have come in via chat. Um, I would like to ask you which book had the draping techniques, um, okay. so that folks can refer to that. Yeah. I I would also like to share tomorrow there will be a follow-up email. It will include the recording link and it will also include a YouTube link for Sandy's um, draping techniques. So please watch for that in your inbox. Um, so let me go back to asking which book or do many of your books have the draping covered? Almost everything I write talks about the draping procedures. And, um, you know, in other countries, it, it there is a different culture. The draping may not be as, as uh, I mean, that looked a little complicated as you're moving the sheets back and forth, but my students pick it up in, four or five practice sessions, and then it just becomes second nature. 
using that bottom drape. But yeah, you got to use a long enough sheet on the bottom, a big enough sheet on the on the table in order to be able to flip it back and forth like that. Uh, but they pick it up really easy. Uh, and so it's in, it is specifically in Fundamentals of Therapeutic Massage. Um, and then the YouTube channel uh, has a lot of stuff. Uh, there's ergonomic stuff and body mechanics stuff. And, and you know, uh, Luke has a series on how to massage an arthritic dog. And, you know, there's all kinds of things. And those of you that are teaching, um, there's a whole series of uh, videos that take you chapter by chapter through my textbooks, but you could use them as an overview uh, if you're using a different textbook um, to give you some ideas, but it takes you step by step through how to use the textbooks and uh, the students too. I have the students look at it so that they, are, they know how to use that as a study strategy. So lots of stuff on the YouTube channel. Okay, and that link will be in tomorrow's follow-up. Yeah. And lastly, on Facebook, you do daily mentoring tips? Well, they're not daily. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I kind of... Um, uh, not, I hadn't been, I haven't been posting as much. And that is because I'm right in the middle of textbook revisions again. So I've been writing textbooks for 30 years and it is always a time consuming process to uh, go through everything with a fine tooth comb to make sure that information hasn't changed. You know, if, is there updated research? you know, especially terminology, it's terminology changed. Uh, and so I had pulled away from it. And um, Laura Allen mentioned something about the mentoring tips. So what I try to do with those is give little pieces of information, um, thought provoking sorts of things sometimes that reflect the current massage therapy practice and uh, a little bit of direction maybe in the future. Uh, the massage therapy as a system, although there's new terminology and changes in the research, the application hasn't changed very much over the years. But how we practice massage and where we practice massage and how um, and who we practice with other professionals or, or uh, in a uh, interdisciplinary program or with other complementary and alternative practitioners, that has changed a lot. And a lot of the questions I see have to do with navigating that. And so that's one of the, the things I often will comment on because I'll troll. I troll through Facebook and some of the other social media stuff. And I go, what are people asking questions about now? And, um, uh, or if I come up with something, if I notice something has shifted or changed when I'm doing research on something, then I'll bring that forward. And so it's, it's something that I can do. And um, you don't have to always agree with me. Um, and I'm always open to constructive, you know, feedback. Uh, what I won't do is argue with somebody because we, you know, there is no right way, just like with this draping presentation. Um, it may be very different than what you've been doing, like you had said, but that doesn't mean that it's not of value. And you can pick and choose what you end up wanting to use. And, uh, but don't discount things until you practice it a little bit and see if it doesn't make a difference. Very good point. Um, and they would um, friend you on Facebook? Yeah. Uh, Sandy Fritz. Yeah. Okay. I, I also have a, a page with Health Enrichment Center. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, um, 
Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for attending. I'd like to mention this is our last EduTalk for 2022. Oh, it's so hard to believe. And we have a great lineup for 2023. We'll start the year January 10th with Paul Kohlmeyer. And his topic will be cupping Eastern versus Western processes. And then on January 24th, we'll have Stephanie, Stephanie Lynn Hall relieving pain and stress with reflexology. And taking a peek into February, February 7th, Ann Williams will present on putting therapy back into aromatherapy. So watch your in-basket for upcoming notifications. Watch your in-basket tomorrow for a copy of Sandy's recording tonight and links to her YouTube channel. And join us again. Meanwhile, have a safe holiday season. And thank you so much for your interest and participation with EduTalks. And thank you, Sandy. Thank we you. really appreciate your presenting. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Bye.